becomes a leading and amazing role model on living life full out and creating life and body balance. Tom graduated in 2011 with a degree in fitness and personal training from Southampton University in England, which covered various courses ranging from advanced strength training and group circuit training to working with older adults and special conditions, such as people with physical disabilities. Tom's been coaching for over a decade now with multiple additional courses being added to his resume. After moving to Canada in 2012, to list a few, he took the Corrective Exercise Specialist Certification. He's been certified through NASM, the TRX RIP and Suspension Trainer certifi Certification Program, also Sandbell and BOSU Ball courses. And it's really clear that Tom is not only educated, but passionate about helping people to feel their best through progressive movement and exercise. Tom's aim is to help people create personalized programs to help any individual exceed their goals and create a positive lifestyle and enjoyment of exercise. In the spring of 2018, Tom graduated from the Vancouver College of Massage Therapy and became fully certified as an RMT. With this combination of training knowledge and RMT skills, Tom aspires and excels in helping others feel and move better than ever. It's always been in Tom's nature to maintain a high level of movement and physical training for himself. And he does what he says. One may say he is definitely an all-around athlete. He's played semi-professional soccer back in England. He's a single-digit handicap, which I can attest to. And he just trained uh, and completed his first marathon. And he did it solo in this uh, COVID-19 era and three hours and 39 minutes. Very impressive, eh? So during this unique time, he's really lived what he's teaching. He's happily married to Karen, is expecting his healthy twins in just a short month. You can find Tom sharing his knowledge daily at Aura Fitness in Langley and online on Instagram at Tom Baxter underscore RMT or on his Facebook page, Baxter's Body Balance. So thank you all for joining us today on our journey to find the truth about life and body balance. Well, there's an Egyptian proverb that says, health is a golden crown placed on the brow of the healthy that only the sick can see. And that's how I'd like to sort of segue us into the question of how do we really define health and fitness? What is our ideal life and body balance? So Bob, Tom, let's begin our journey today on finding the uncommon truth about fitness and body balance. Welcome both of you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for the intro. Yeah, why, why, why not start with a, a very challenging question that I think we've all been trying to discover. Eh? <laughs> it's, uh, it's one that I, I feel is just an ongoing journey uh, for, for myself and for those that I'm learning from. And, you know, you as a, an older role model of mine, and as you know very well, my father-in-law in his 60s has run multiple marathons. Um, and half it's, it's just how, how do you address that? But really he looks and you guys look and myself and adapting a way of life where movement and fitness should really just be a way of looking at like investing in, in investing in yourself and investing into your future. Um, everything that we do today is, is going to make tomorrow a little bit better or potentially a little bit worse depending on the way we, we approach it. So, um, for those that you know get enjoyment out of fitness and love it, they're always finding new goals, new ways of trying to challenge themselves, push themselves to, to reach new heights. And uh, for those that don't enjoy it so much, it's it's for individuals like myself and yourself to try and help them cultivate that desire and passion for movement and exercise. And, and uh, I'm sure that we can help, as we have helped many, help many, many more with uh, you know challenging their and, and channeling their, their energy to, to really enjoy fitness and make it just a, a life a lifestyle, right? Well said. I think that, uh, you know, health as a whole and fitness is really about us trying to identify what is the outcomes that we really want. What type of body uh, mm. do we desire to have? And that's really based around 
what it is we want to do with that body, right? And, and mm-hmm. how do we maintain health? So, you know, I look at myself in my 50s, uh, you in your 30s, and Bob just entered his 60s. So, Bob, what do you think, you know, health and fitness can be really defined as? Well, Thomas, I'd like to hear your point on this, actually, because it seems to me that I've gone through many different stages in my life. So when I was in my 20s, I was, uh, came out of a very athletic um, uh, childhood and then uh, quickly ran into the brick wall of having children very early in life, having a mm-hmm. career, and everything came to a, a, a sputtering halt in terms of the ability to manage my time because nobody had actually taught me to manage my time. Um, I never learned that skill. So all of a sudden, everything else took priority and physical fitness and health was like at the bottom of the heap. Um, That changed in my 30s and my 40s. I had a great couple of decades there. But um, as I started to age, my body started to change again. And um, now I find myself in my 60s, very slow metabolism, apparently, Thomas. Much lazier, apparently, Thomas. <laughs> and uh, and like to see, like to hear your perspective on that. Um, yeah, uh, being a being a professional. Yeah, for sure. I think really, uh, you know, to to speak on it, I think we we've grown up. Myself, I've grown up in a very fortunate era where people have maybe it's due to health pandemics. You know, the levels of obesity that we see are the, the different different illnesses out there related to the lack of movement exercise as, as one of the causes um with that maybe that scarcity that it wasn't in your your generation if you like growing up um and a lot of people are now putting it as a priority i think priority is a, is a key word there with with the health and fitness game it's uh in my life and it will continue to be even when i have have kids of my own you have to carve out that time and you have to put that in your daily schedule you have 24 hours a day and um, we all do i wish we had more sometimes um but you have to put that time in and even if that's just a 30 minute like right after this call i'm ready to go for a run with my husky he needs to get out and i'm making my fitness evolve around that today um as well as the 4:40 tea time today but um uh you know i've got to make sure i <laughs> <laughs> I make sure I get I, I get out, right? Make sure I get it in. So, and even if it's not the biggest workout of the day I, or, or of the week, sorry, I just make sure that there's a little bit planned every day. It's just consistent action. Um, so really, there's not there's no huge underlying you know secret secret source to that one. It really is just comes from consistent movement, consistent action, and planning. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few people in the 60s that are still moving and running and putting in that hard work. And really, they're, they're anomalies. I see it as, as a lot more people like my, my dad is a prime example who head down through the fam, you know, making sure he's earning a living for the family and uh, let work become a, a priority over his health and fitness. Um, and, and that's not to knock him, that's just how it was. And I think that today's generation is a little different. However, a lot of people do do get full through the hoop, if you like, and, and get tunnel vision on their, their goals financially, if we like, or, or business-wise, and um, it can, can really hurt them long-term. Like I say, the, the greatest wealth is health. So, um, and a lot of people spend their life, uh, you know, trying to create their wealth financially, and then, spend their wealth trying to regain health and that just sucks for those around them um, those that care for them and uh, you're really kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you head down for 10 to 20 years two decades to try and create a, a good life for your kids when they don't they see that when they're older and they really can absorb your life and see what goes on you're a lot of people are, are struggling in those later years they don't want to see that so for me, I'm investing for when I'm 60, 70, 80. I want to still be able to get out. I'm going to be running. You know, my I just ran that first marathon as he tested to at the beginning of this. Um, I was not a long distance runner. Uh, COVID can you know help because like, the gyms are closed. So I decided to get out and get running and started a 10k, 12k, 14, and just took it up. I did a half marathon at the beginning of the year. 
and then I decided I'd take on a marathon and that's just again another sign of just commitment starting with it small goals and uh, keeping keeping moving you know I think uh, something we've talked about and you guys have both just sort of uh, uh, skirted around it is what are the key factors for us to be healthy and to live that active lifestyle we've called them the four pillars of health but Another word that I've, I've uh, and a description of them is the four factors for health. And one of them is the obvious, which we've talked about. That's nutrition and hydration, right? Okay. We look at the body uh, like a car. Well, we've got to be careful about what quality of fuel we put in the car so that it keeps the engine clean and operating longer. And we're doing the oil changes and the different things in the right cycle, right? That's, that's all around nu- nutrition. Well, lifestyle is the second factor that we really need to uh, be clear on. And that's us defining the activities and exercises and things that we want to do in our life. That lifestyle really is a key element to what we fuel ourselves with. And the next point, or the third factor is what environment or proximity we put ourselves into. And, you know, as uh, you know, you mentioned your father-in-law, uh, Levi. Uh, Levi and I have been amazing friends, and, and we're both uh, a little bit crazy. We're always out riding our motorcycles together, and we're uh, running, you know, before I had some injuries that uh, have limited me in that area. But it is it is a lifestyle decision that determines, I think, what type of body we want to have, which therefore determines the exercise or the activities that we do and are able to do, you know? So for me as a, uh, uh, let's call it a, a, a more a mesomorph type body style and a more muscular uh, stocky person versus a taller uh, lean person like yourself as an example, over six feet, uh, strong as an ox, but lean muscle, those activities and things that we do have an impact on and who we are and what type of body we have is a big factor in that. So not only is it nutrition, lifestyle, and environment, well, I just talked about body types is the fourth factor is our genetics. And I think all four of these need to be considered for us to really determine what's healthy and what is fit in our ideal life or our ideal body balance. So maybe we could segue into the next question with that and going, how important is it to be aware of our body type, our genetics, and who we have been created to be, and what works best for us in that? So Tom, could you elaborate a little bit on the types of bodies, and we'll get into some of the nutrition and environmental and and exercise type stuff that goes best with each type of body? Yeah, totally. And, and just to touch on that before we dive into the genetics, it's, it's exactly that. Those those four points are a great start point for people to actually sit down, maybe pen and paper, and ask themselves, what do they want their lifestyle to look like? You know, how, what is their nutrition currently, and and how can they tweak that? If if not, you know, I hate tearing people's nutrition up and writing a whole plan, but how can we just adapt that, modify that to get them towards the certain goals that they want? physically or, or performance wise or, or body shape wise. Um, but yes, yeah, a great, great point. A lot of people just don't actually, you know, go through that process of writing down where they're at and where they want to be and uh, what's going to, what it's going to take to get there. And then if they have, you know, if individuals really have some, some deeper questions that they want, reach out, you know, speak to Heath, message me. Uh, maybe we can help you specifically there. But, um, yeah, regarding the, the genetics, like you, you touched on, you've got your, your mesomorph, which is generally more muscular, uh, you, you're, you're very kind of gymnastic look, kind of thin waist, big shoulders, muscly type, that's a, more of a, a mesomorphic body build. Um, ectomorph, uh, a very usually thick, thin, kind of tall and thin, a struggle to put on, on muscle, um, and even fat. And they've just got a super high metabolism, so they've got to obviously make sure that they're getting in the, the, the good complex carbohydrates, uh, probably eating a lot of meals more frequently, um, having their proteins and fats, and definitely having a, a pre-carbohydrate meal before workouts, and, and yeah, just 
just making sure that their focus is in, in, in to get the game if they're looking to put on muscle. Um, and then and then you've got your endomorph, which are generally more, you know, shorter, stockier, larger body fat percentages, you know, looking at maybe like a, 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 your front line, a defenseman or a sumo wrestler or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, each of them have to be aware of generally what, what their genetic form looks like and it's pretty you know you can somewhat look up your up your your genetic line um but we also know that we can greatly influence this with lifestyle with diet um so uh, yeah there's there's lots of different things that play into that our, our movement um and how how we we lift you can do a gym workout but that could be guided towards you know endurance movement where, where you're doing high reps more more back-to-back -back movements which is going to really lean you down get the metabolism fired up get your heart rate up and looking to kind of chisel you which i've been doing a bit more of that kind of full metcon based workouts recently without the gym um, a lot of body weight stuff or you want to be pushing some heavier weights low reps trying to channel the strength and power which um, hopefully uh, you guys have a I'm sure I know Heath has a, a good knowledge on this, but um, yeah, so those are your three kind of main body types, right? Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Bob, what are your thoughts on, on body type and what you've noticed in your life? And, and, you know, you've got a really athletic family with your daughter as an elite hockey player and other things. Have you really noticed uh, in your coaching any differences in how the different types of bodies function best and how do we get that ideal balance for each type it seems to me that um i've watched like my family members and i've watched the, the hockey teams that i've coached that everybody this is a big issue with all athletes um at different times it seems that some people can have a have a maybe based on their body type but probably more based on their habits and their rituals have ended periods where they're at, at kind of an elite uh, performance level or where they're, they're, they're feeling their best, uh, looking their best in their heads, right? What, whatever their goals are. So they can maintain that for a certain period of time, but it, almost everybody I've seen, I think I would say everybody that I've seen has, has had ups and downs. And um, I really like what Thomas said, he talked about uh, planning, planning your days out, planning your weeks out um, in terms of what you eat, how much exercise you have, because it just seems to me that there needs to be time for recovery. There needs to be time for uh, elite stresses in your life that you're not prepared for. At times you have to work really hard and you don't have much time to exercise. A lot of people travel as well, very hard to exercise when you're traveling to Winnipeg in the middle of the winter. Um, so it takes an extraordinary effort at some times to, to, to find those times to do it. So it seems to me that um, people go through ups and downs. Ups and downs last weeks or months. Um, and in my case, probably years. <laughs> and uh, it, it does take something to get you back on track. It takes that initiative, that discipline. Maybe it takes a supporting, caring friend or uh, a spouse i know that in my family one of the truths about uh, our fitness level is everybody supports everybody else so i know that it's really healthy for my wife to get out and run play hockey etc so i make sure as her spouse to make sure that that sort of stuff happens and um and if she doesn't get that time then um she's not at her 100 percent uh level my ch my children as well so I make sure that that happens as part of my role in their lives, um, and they do the same for me. So it's a, that supportive environment that's really helpful. You know, this is a um, great discussion. I think, you know, our body type, our genetics, our nutrition are key elements. The environment as well are key elements to what it is that uh, we're focused on and what we're doing, right? Getting in proximity to people that are doing what we want to achieve. And I'm gonna give a quote from Nelson Mandela. He said, I have always believed exercise is a key, not only to physical health, but to peace of mind. 
And this is something that we as um, people forget that our whole state is tied into our physiology. And the better we keep the body, the better the chemistry within the body, which affects our ability to focus, which is our thinking. That then leads into our self-talk and the language we use and the cycle begins on our whole state and managing that. And our opportunity to have a healthy and fit life that's really doesn't matter what anybody else wants. It comes down to what do we want as individuals and what are the goals and outcomes that we want. That's why I mentioned those four factors of health, environment, and who we're around is critical. So my encouragement is to exercise because it will not only bring physical health, it will bring mental health and even spiritual health through meditation and breathing and just allowing ourselves to slow down and to connect. But all of these things that we're doing, the things that we're talking about with genetics and, and, and environment and nutrition, I think really comes down to how do we do it? And what we've all alluded to in this discussion is it comes down to our plan and defining what our, our own individual ideal body balance is, the goal, the outcome that we want to achieve, and then creating the routines or rituals that will drive the results we want. I've trained with you many times. I've learned an immense amount of, of physical knowledge, how to heal better uh, through many injuries and different things, and you've helped me get back on my feet. So how do we plan and set those physical goals that are actually going to be realistic in our expectations? Because as you've told me many times, Heath, you can overdo it sometimes. Levi, you can overdo it sometimes. And anybody who's a leader has experienced overdoing it sometimes. But I think it really comes down to us being clear, setting our goals, why we want them, that's the purpose, and then developing realistic and sustainable daily routines. So, yeah, no, Tom, well Bob, in your guys' minds. Yeah, well, well said, man. I like that. It's uh... That's, that's exactly it. First of all, establishing the why. Um, we're not going to get get off the couch and, and do anything if we don't really have that, that deep underlining why. And, and that, that has to be discovered for, for each individual. And it can be something, you know, short time frame, something specific to what you're doing. Um, it, it, or it can be a really big underlining why. You know, you know, it's often related to, to family or family member, something like that, that's going to really drive you to do better, to be better. Um, and then, yeah, establishing a plan is, is, is key from there to keep you moving forward and doing those actionable goals daily. Um, to speak specific on this time that we're in now, I, I've found that communicating with a lot of clients, which obviously I don't get to see on the daily anymore um, at, this, at this given moment, it's, it's key to keep it simple. Um, I think a lot of people are getting very overwhelmed um, and you know, the, the stress levels are heightened with other things now, maybe financially, you know, not being able to work. So um, I think you've really got to look at the full picture. Uh, and, and at the moment, for now, I'm, I'm really keeping it simple. But for quite a busy guy, an entrepreneurial guy, I want to be doing lots and making, fulfilling my day. But I literally have a daily, daily task uh, list that I like to include my exercise within that. And then I get to check the box. And that's an important fulfillment for everyone that I kind of have that, I think, every day. For me, it was this morning I had my breath breath work. I know you do a lot of meditation and breath work. Mine's based off of the Wim Hof method, which I know you know well. Uh, you can YouTube this. Anyone, uh, Wim Hof has, has been a, a great influence to me. I've been following a lot of his cold therapy and breathing and mindfulness over the last year, pretty much. Um, and that's a great way I like to start my day off. Uh, it doesn't happen every single day, seven days a week, but uh, I, yeah, I put it in there today, doing a little bit of stretching. 
and I tick that off. You know, set your set your full daily goals and, and to now like I say, I can't get out and work in a ten hour shift. So it's it there's a lot of time available, um, but also a lot of time for people to waste. So um you really gotta structure your day so that you are being successful and you see that as being successful, even if it doesn't look like what your day used to be. Um so I wanted to speak on that, you know, for people that are out there now and, and have got you know so self-loathing if we like and, and, and in that rut of, of not doing what they're normally used to and, and not performing at the level that they like to well start simple um, you know write out some small goals and, and start succeeding and that's going to help drive you to continue yeah. yeah go ahead bob great comments thomas excellent comments this is one of the things that struck me as you were speaking was people have pictures in their head of who they are and that's largely based on what they've done or what people have told them their experiences perhaps um so i'm not a runner i'm not a weightlifter i'm uh you know i'm chubby i'm uh uh, uh yoga what's that Breathing exercises, what's that? You know, the, the, the mindset people have about who they are right now is, is their current reality. And I want to encourage listeners, when you're listening to Thomas speak um, and Heath speak, is to keep an open mind that uh, we we're all, you know, we we're all born and we had, we had this almost unlimited potential as, as young people growing up. And as we started to grow up, we started to learn who we were. And, um people said things to us people uh we had experiences that created the people that we are today and and uh, i just know that um at some point at several points in my life i had to really reflect on who i was right now and then create a new vision about what i wanted to do and who i wanted to be and the physical body and the health part of life is totally recreatable in my estimation i've seen it happen in my own life, I've seen it happen in so many other people's lives. And who we are today, the time we allocate to physical activity today, the, the way we eat, the way we shop, uh, it's, it's really 100% controllable in my estimation. Now, he's got not good knees right now, and I don't have good knees right now too, but like I've got a mountain bike, man. So at 4 o'clock today, I'm off for an hour and a half on my mountain bike. Knees knees don't factor into that right so i have had to change my activities over over my lifespan but you know there was a time when i was running for two hours at a time right i was a uh, not a marathoner but a half marathoner so um you know i just want to encourage people listening that uh that i think of all the things we do in life our bodies our eating our health is like that's why they use the word are it's within our control I'd also like to encourage you to reach out um, to a coach, to somebody that could support you, to somebody who um, really understands nutrition and and, like that's, these are complex things where we're not, it's not a natural thing to know what to eat, when to eat it uh, based on our body types, based on our exercise patterns. There's all sorts of experts out there, all sorts of people out there that with a little bit of instruction, a little bit of encouragement can massively change our lives. I want to encourage you with one thing here then i'm going to set you a little goal uh task and i've only just just met you on here today but i think <laughs> this could could benefit you before you get out on your bike ride sorry i don't mean to take the the call somewhere else Heath, but seeing as we're about the uncommon truths i believe and i know you you've heard a lot about the william hoff method and people think breathing what is that like bob said and it just made me think well I'm going to get you to actually try this before you go out on your mountain bike today. Uh, we're going to send you a link and it's going to take you about five to seven minutes. And uh, you're going to go out there having just flooded your body with a bunch of oxygen into the brain. You're going to feel a whole new pump. It's, it's quite incredible um, doing this and I won't delve into it too much, but there is a, a lot of uncommon truths about our, our autonomic nervous system uh, that, central nervous system network that we have and it's autonomic meaning that we have really no control of it however there's some studies coming out off of the Bimhoff method where he's actually 
um, discovered that we can have some control. It's becoming more of a, a, a conscious brain, if you like, by using our breath. Um, and we can tap into some some incredible things uh, by actually yeah activating these systems deep within the the, the midbrain and the active cortex there. So it's 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 quite incredible. And I think just some small steps. And, and why I love the Vim Hop is because it's really simple. It's about 34 inhale exhales. You exhale and you basically hold the breath for as long as you until you need to take another breath in. Full inhale, squeeze down. Pressure to the board of the brain, and then you follow that, and you might do two cycles today. Um, and it really helps to not only improve that kind of vascularity system, it helps to improve the blood flow. Um, it can help improve the respiratory system because you're challenging it, you're utilizing it fully. Uh, and yeah, I'm more on a, a neurological system as well. So I think that would be a great thing for you to throw in there. <laughs> well, brilliant. You know, uh, brilliant my friend brilliant listen um you know i learned many, many years ago that i had to hydrate before this right so yeah. what i that's what i do i take the time and i drink water before i go out and do an activity and what okay. an increase in uh, energy level what an in increase in endurance to drink before not and yeah. enduring too but before right half an hour before so yeah. the breathing thing brilliant my friend thank yeah. you so much We'll, we'll we'll drop a little tag for for you to check it out. <laughs> nice and, and challenge, it. challenge accepted. Challenge Good. accepted. <laughs> so, so guys, I just need to I just need to show you something. <laughs> challenge accepted. So That's, he just thought, for the for the for the podcast uh, for the podcast he's wearing a t-shirt that says challenge accepted brilliant lad yes yes so <laughs> hey guys i'm gonna I, this whole point i just want to summarize before we go into our very last uh discussion segment but i think there's two really key elements here one we got to realize we need to make being healthy and fit simple and our health and our fitness is really tied to what we think so i challenge Everybody, as I challenge myself every day, a man is what he thinks. Start using words after I am that are affirming and positive focused because our mindset and our state is a critical success factor to anything, not just our health, not just our fitness, to anything. The four pillars of health are really around that. Tom, you talked about breathing. Breath and breathing is critical. Just five minutes of deep breathing will change your entire body chemistry and your mindset. Two, the nutrition and hydration we've talked about. We need to keep it simple. Drink water. If you think you're drinking enough, drink a little more. And quite honestly, you'll be shocked if you just add a little Himalayan sea salt into that for your electrolytes and or BCAs or other things, there's lots you can talk about on the subject, it will really make a significant difference when you're going into doing something exerting like a bike ride, Bob, or uh, a golf game or anything that is going to be long term. Salt is critical to hot, proper hydration. Three, we need to do the activity. We need to exercise. That's it. Move the body. You don't need to be an elite athlete. We're all on a journey to our ideal health and body balance. Four, rest. So this kind of segues us in to the fourth and final segment of our talk today. I'm going to start it with a Thomas Edison quote. And he said, the doctor of the future will actually give no medicine, but will be interested in his patients and in the care of the human frame, that's the body, the diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Disease is dis-ease. It starts in our mind, our focus. Then it moves into our, what we fuel the body with and all of health is affected by what we're putting in our body, our soul, and our spirit. So 
just to share a story before we get into our fourth point. Our focus needs to be really strong. And an old story that I was told, I'm sure you guys maybe have heard this, but what is a full life? Well, I was told this story at a presentation. And there's a man there saying, here's a cup. Is it full? He showed it to us. It was empty. And he said, is it full? It's actually full of air. So you could say it's full. He then went and took a bunch of big rocks and he put the rocks in there. And he said, is it now full? And and those big rocks were full right to the brim. Some people said yes. Others said, no, it's not full. He then took some sand and he put the sand in the cup. And he asked, is it full? People again said yes. And some people said no. It's all based on our thinking. Finally, he's asked, after he put in water and he filled the cup up full of water with the rocks and the sand and the water, it's full. And he said, is the glass or the cup full? At that point, everybody said yes. The moral of the story was in his next point. If I put the water in first, there's no room for the big rocks or for the sand. So this hit me like a punch in the face. What is really important, you put in first. The big rocks, those are called priorities. That focus is critical. And you can go online, you can research many, many great thought leaders on it. You know, the one thing, you can go on with uh, uh, Tony Robbins, there's so many thought leaders out there, they all speak the truth about focus, control that, put energy into those priorities, and control your thinking and your language. The last thing is our body, but it is the easiest thing to fix because it will have an impact on our mindset and our focus. So I hope that story brought some value as it did for me. But that really segues then into how important to health and healing or the prevention of injury and disease is rest and recovery. Because I get caught up in doing, but I forget that my body only heals when I sleep. Not when I'm sitting still during the day when I sleep. So Thomas, as a certified trainer and RMT, can you expound a little bit on the whole concept of health and healing and how important rest is to recovery? Yeah, I think it's, it's truly they're still learning more and more about the, the importance of rest and, and sleep. And specifically, there's, there's a lot that we don't even know about the human brain and the recovery it makes during sleep. Um, I mean, we, we of course, do recover some bit. Like if, if someone comes in for a massage therapy session, we can help realign the fibers. We can help start that healing process. But like you said, the, the majority of our recovery is in our sleep. And, I mean, most people know this, but you really should be looking for around seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, there's some science saying you can sleep too much. You're kind of has that feeling of a bit of a drag on a new day, if you like, when you're oversleeping. Um, but then there's there's obviously counter counter research as well, saying that some people get up to 10 to 12 hours sleep a day. Uh, I don't know, I certainly couldn't find the time now, let alone when I have twins. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I, I, I'm one of those that, that tries to aim for about seven, seven to eight hours. Uh, I function fairly well off about six, um, but for, when my training is, is up and I'm you know putting in some, some hard workload, some tough volume, uh, I definitely aim to try and get my, my sleep up. So again, it's it's you, you got to ask each individual how, how much have you been doing, how much training have you been putting in, how stressful has your day been, um, and and really you should be aiming to get in a good amount of sleep and recovery for post uh, workout days and especially pre events and stuff like that. If you're ever doing any any long distance 
events or uh, endurance events, you've got to make sure you're getting sleep in. But yeah, it's, it's, it's no no real hidden secret on that matter. It's uh, there's a lot of importance for the, the sleep and for rest and recovery on a physical level. So, also a question. I agree with you on sleep. I don't think many of us, especially entrepreneurs, leaders, uh, get enough uh, sleep in a day. I range, I, I shoot for seven hours. There are days I only get six. And mm. there's been times where I've only had five because the schedule is so just racing. That's where it's at. But I know by the end of a week of that, I'm in deficit. My body doesn't function. I start to get sick. I am tired. I can't do it regularly. So the goal yeah. being shoot for that seven. Try to maintain that. Don't be afraid to, to rest, relax. But I think also just to touch base on this, when you're working out hard, you get sore. You get injured. What would you recommend and what as well, Bob, I'm curious on your experience with injury and recovery around the area of massage, around the area of, of um, modifying exercise through injury versus stopping. What are your thoughts? Yeah, totally. I mean, modifying movement, that's, that's a, a great way of putting it. For, for me, it's, we, I'm very fortunate to be part of a, a clinic, a multidisciplinary clinic called Restore Rehabilitation, where I'm the RMT there in Surrey. Um, that works with quite a, a, a young driven team and we all kind of uh, work around the same values that uh, movement is, is a key part to recovery, to full recovery. Um, as you said, through exercise, or you, you are microfiber tearing the tissue. Um, when we injure the tissue, take it a step further, maybe a strain or a sprain, um, you have to give your body that time to rest. That acute phase, maybe three, three to five days, you know, uh, ice, rest, ice, compression, elevation, follow the same principle, principles. And then, you know, doing some manual therapy, getting the body moving. And it's important to keep that movement within the pain free limits, right? So, um, if you have a bit of a bicep strain, you're certainly not going to go load it initially. You might be looking to see how much range of motion you've got within pain free. Um, you're going to test that and start to move that and then eventually when you're getting nearer to full range of motion you might be doing some some active stretches so you're actually assisting and holding that and then eventually you'll move progress into doing some maybe eccentric strengthening with just resistant bands where eccentric is the lengthening phase of the muscles so when we're extending the elbow um, before we jump into like concentric or isometric strengthening so there is definitely phases of that so it's important to to reach out to somebody or, or find a you know, health professional that knows what they're doing, that knows what grade of injury that you have. Um, so it's important that you're, you're, you're addressing it the, the best way. But it's kind of old, old science where we just say, rest and don't do anything. Like, for instance, with whiplashes, you used to put on a neck brace, right? And then six weeks, like eight weeks of the neck brace would come out and they barely move because they've just basically completely atrophied those supporting uh, you know, phasic muscles there, atomic muscles of the neck, and they're just kind of stiffen themselves up even more. Now we get uh, you know, whiplash. Uh, obviously, we we assess uh, the transverse ligament in the neck, make sure things are safe there, um, and then we get them, see how they see where their movements are. And you you have to really keep movement as a as a key part of recovery, but within your pain free movement. And, making sure you're doing that safely with a health professional. Um, yeah, that's key. And to touch back on the, the sleep part, because I like, didn't really provide any groundbreaking uh, knowledge or information, but regarding to like uncommon truth with sleep, I think the importance of having a, a, a pre-sleep routine is, is vital. And that might be different for everyone, but, uh, um, you know, it's, it's highly important to look at are we out of technology for maybe 60 minutes before? Put your phones away for 60 minutes before. You want to kind of really dampen down the, the alarm alarm systems. So I don't really like to have my phone away or in a, at least in a drawer or face down so there's no blue light. Um, I love sleeping in a, a really dark room. Um, some people like to do a, a stretching before bed or, or a 
the meditation before bed, something to really slow you down. Um, some prayer before bed, whatever that may look like. So a pre-bed routine is, is vital to have good sleep so that we actually access the deeper REM sleep, um, which really is where we hit great recovery time. Some people say, oh, I slept for seven hours, but if you go through like my Garmin Fenix watch, which I can go into my app and it can show me what phases of sleep, what, what yeah, de depths of sleep that I was in. So sometimes the sleep isn't as good as we, we hope. Uh, I think a pre-sleep routine may help uh, people with that. Well, that's a really good that's a really good comment. Uh, how about you, Bob? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, great comments. Th thanks so much, gents. This is actually very inspiring for me personally. Um, I remember a story Zig Ziglar uh, told many many years ago. He's fifty years old. He had just come very very close to bankruptcy, and uh, he was grossly uh, underfit we'll call it. And um, he decided to make some life changes about 50 years old. And uh, in terms of recovery, what he decided to do was go out, he, because he traveled a lot, he was a salesperson, he decided to simply walk around the hotel room that he was in. And it was, it was really cold out where he was. So he just simply said, I'm going to walk back and forth in this hotel room 20 times that I <laughs> And that's how he started. Is he just walked back and forth in the hotel room twenty times? Which, which, uh, when he moved back into his house, he said, "I'm just going to go for a walk around the block once." And so he moved that from the hotel room to his house and he, or to his block, and he walked once around the block. And he made a commitment to himself to do that every day or every second day, but increase it as he felt it was appropriate. Right, and pretty soon. Um, he was walking many blocks, uh, which turned into running, and then he became like a, a long-distance runner. Mm. Process. So lots of people out there that they get discouraged when their 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 current reality. They want to go and get fit, and then they try something that's a bit too much for them. So I'd say one of the uncommon truths about this is that you have to start start small. Start with baby steps. Move forward. Don't hurt yourself uh, and, and rejoice and celebrate the small incremental improvements you make. I was, I was watching this young man in the gym, quite a thin, thin, thin young man, probably 16, 17 years old, Thomas, and he grabbed the 40 pound, 40 pound weights and he started to try to uh, curl them, right? <laughs> it's like, and it's like, hey, buddy. <laughs> How long, do you think, <laughs> how long do you think that lasted for, right? And he probably got really discouraged. I watched the look in his face. He tried to get that first one up, and he went and put him back, and then he went on to another, another piece, right? He just didn't have any – started too big. It's like start, start small, baby steps, don't hurt yourself, and just s celebrate the, the small accomplishments and, and keep a mind to keep improving towards your long-term goals. Because this – Thomas, true or false? This is a marathon, man. This is not a sprint. Totally, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen a couple of these incredible long endurance athletes, these Ironmaners, and that, that's kind of one of my life physical bucket lists, if you like, in my life. I'd like to be able to tick off that Ironman, and I'm not built really for it. Um, I've recently started training towards it, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not something I'm looking to do even next year, you know, I, I, when I do it, I want to do it well. And, and I'm training in the back of the mind. That's the macro goal. And you've got to have that, you know, some, some micro goals to build you up towards that. Um, one day I'll be able to put that tattoo on my calf or my lats uh, of the Ironman accomplishment. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a life, it's a lifestyle. Right? You know, gentlemen, I want to thank you for such a great discussion today. And I'd like to try to summarize what we found to be the uncommon truth about life and body balance. The list I've created is 10 key points. One, we need to define, plan what we want our health to be. This is relative to what we want our lifestyle to be and the activities 
we desire and enjoy. We need to do what we love. Follow your passion. Two, we need to consider who we are. That's our body type. That's the lifestyle that best suits us. We need to be truthful about those genetic factors that we have. But don't allow them to control us. Just use them so that we can be wise in the plan that we're going to create. Three, we need to be aware of the best foods and diets that support our body type and our genetics and the type of training that will maximize our efforts. And I would really encourage you to go online, look up what your body type is, right? Are you an extra, extra? Are you a meso? Or are you an endo morph body type? That will, you can find amazing articles that will help you with exercise and with uh, food types and balance that is going to help you have the body type that you'd really like. Four, we need to definitely define and create a plan and know why we want the outcomes. What are the big rocks or priorities we need to focus on and make sure we put them into our routine first? Focus on the majors, not the minors. Control our thinking and our language because whatever we say after I am is our truth. Create great incantations and 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 and. Basically, chance. You'll see the most successful athletic teams in the world. Use them to create an environment in their mind and in their body that drives them forward because we're all going to have those tough days that we need to overcome. Realize it's just not easy, but we can have a simple plan. We need to get around those. Number five is get around those that already are where we want to be because they will pull us up. And when we're pulled up, we can reach back with the other hand and pull someone up. We need to learn the principles of performance, all based off of the pursuit of our purpose. Six, we then need to create simple routines, daily rituals that are sustainable. We start with the small baby steps, as Bob and Tom have said. That's going to provide us with the best chance of achieving our outcomes, avoiding injury, and getting to the destination we want. And we need to be realistic with that. Seven, focus on the four pillars of health. Breathe. Do meditation and deep breathing. Choose your food and the hydration well. Exercise. And most importantly, make sure you rest because your rate of injury and illness goes up if you are not taking care of that. Eight, we need to work hard, but remember that the rest, and we need that seven to eight hours of sleep to heal. No healing occurs any other time except when we sleep. And as Tom said, we need to focus on having a pre-sleep routine. It isn't best to be on the internet, surfing, watching a movie. Be quiet. Spend some time with your family, children, do some breathing, meditation, relax. Find a routine that will help you just be calm. Nine, if you are ill or injured, which we all will experience if we're pursuing any type of performance or uh, growth, remember that we need to modify our movement. It is the best way to recover. It's not to stop movement. We need to be in motion. A body in motion will stay in motion. And ultimately, seek professional help to assist us. That could be chiro, massage, stretch, meditation, cold therapy. I swear by it. I take cold showers every day, sometimes two a day, to help get rid of lactic acid, get rid of toxins. This stuff works. It's not just a little fat. And it's historical. For centuries, people have been doing this. And the last thing, we need to remember that our health or our life and body balance is up to us. 
we need to be accountable and find the appropriate support to empower your purpose. Start with those baby steps one at a time. A Chinese proverb says that the 10,000 mile journey begins with the first step. Start. And in the process, learn the principles of performance. Gentlemen, I can't thank you enough. To all of you out there, I really hope that these 10 points about the uncommon truth of life and body balance are a benefit to you. So, if you're looking for a personal trainer or would like to benefit from Tom's health and fitness expertise, you can find Tom sharing his knowledge and workouts daily at Aura Fitness in Langley and online on Instagram at Tom Baxter underscore RMT or on his Facebook page, Baxter's Body Balance. I really want to thank you, Bob and Tom, and all of you for joining us today. Until next time, God bless.